<laughs> it's gonna be cool. <laughs> this has all been recording this whole time. <laughs> we good? I think so. All right, this has been. Ah, uh, this is Daniel. No, it should be and this is Daniel. Okay, and this is Daniel. And it's time for another <laughs> bad podcast. Uh, first of all, to carry on last week's theme, uh, this beer of the week is not even a beer. It's a cream soda. Thank you, Daniel, for You're that high-class cream soda. This episode is not brought to you by anyone in particular except for... Brendan. Brendan. And us. Um, hopefully, by the time Jamie's hears about last week's fake advertisement, yeah, maybe they'll start uh, paying us. Hopefully. I mean, I think it's only fair. It's only fair. Uh, okay, we talk, oh, wait, we did the intro. Yes. Beer of the week. Yes. Because I didn't have another beer. <laughs> <laughs> I only still only have Modelo. All right, whatever. <clears throat> hey, before we start talking about anything, we should... <laughs> did it just die? What does that even mean? Okay, so Cat. it's all fine. We're all good? Okay, I think we should go over what we kind of envision happening with this. Okay. I'm gonna start calling it a show in the next few weeks. We're we're we finally got the name. We're gonna try to figure out intros, how we want that to go. But as far as everything else, it's just, I mean, two guys sitting down talking. That's really all it is. Anybody who thinks it's anything other than that, you 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 don't know what what podcasts are. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which is okay. We probably yeah. lost half the people who subscribed just then. <laughs> Uh, which is really cool because at this point in time we have increased because we used your old yeah, channel, so it went up. We're up thirteen subs. I, I was sitting which, at forty. I was not expecting yeah. that. So already. thanks to everybody who uh, liked and subscribed. Also hit the bell uh, <laughs> for um, notifications about when we upload and go live in the future. Our our plans are every Wednesday to have something uploaded, but um, sometimes it doesn't work out. Which is okay. It's okay. We're not the ones editing, and I don't know how to edit. Yeah. Uh, anyways, so we're planning on... Oh, and we've had comments about uh, putting something on the walls behind us. We actually don't even want to be in this room. Yeah, we want uh, to have a different room. My home has been under renovation since purchasing it almost three years ago. So we don't want to be in this house even doing it, but we just don't really have a spot right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, we heard noise from the AC. Yeah, sorry about the last, I think, two episodes. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, we had the AC on because it was really hot, and we thought it wouldn't affect it, but it, it, it kind it of did. It definitely did. Yeah. But in the third one, which is not released yet, yeah, still a week and a half away, uh, we did a little test, and it doesn't sound like you could hear the AC, so... Right. Maybe, maybe it'll be good. Maybe that's just to us. I don't know. We're still figuring things out. Also... Soon we'll be on uh, iTunes and Spotify, we hope. But for now, just we're on YouTube. By the time this one airs. Probably, yeah. Because that'll be in two weeks. Yeah. Won't it? Yeah. Yep. Two, th- three weeks. Because one week and a half and another week and a half will then be three weeks. Yes, you're right. Okay. You got honors in uh, math. So. <laughs> the maths. Yeah. Okay. We, we were going to take a break from uh, wacky ideas, as my dad calls them. Mm-hmm. And just to prove that those wacky ideas are not from beer, I'm not drinking. Wait, never mind. Well, I am drinking are. beer. <laughs> <laughs> He's only had like two sips. And uh, this is cream soda. This is, we yeah, we had handcrafted cream soda, which I got to pull up my notes app. So this time I wanted to talk about one kind of uh, thing that I thought of throughout the week. And that was what truth is. Well, truth is kind of subjective. Not subjective or not truth is subjective, but how we view truth is. I will elaborate. Okay, please do. But then I wanted to talk about um, <laughs> our top five movies. Yeah, I just narrowed it down like three minutes ago before we started. So can we talk about how you could not think of one movie you've ever movie watched? I've ever seen. Like, what is it when when somebody asks you something like, "Hey, what's your favorite food?" Or it's like, "I've never eaten anything in my whole life. I, I don't eat. I don't know. I've never watched a movie." Um, <laughs> happens all the time. Yeah. Uh, actually. Before we even talk about anything, I wanted to talk. We went to Eureka Springs for the first time. I'm 25, lived near, I mean, we're an hour and a half away, maybe, an hour away from Eureka Springs. Thanks and for I the invite. Just now gone. Yeah. Well, you were probably at work. Probably, but you could have invited me. 
You're right. I'm sorry. I should. That's have okay. I want to go though. Like I should have invited you to go on the date with me and my wife. Yeah, no, it's fine. I understand. Uh, before we talk about that, the uh, podcast we just uploaded caused a discussion with my parents <laughs> that I was not wanting. Yeah. But that the the idea is uh, that made me think of kind of acceptance, but not really acceptance, but just like you can never be yourself if you're constantly trying to make somebody else feel good. Mm -hmm. Like talking about how I view religion, not even religion, how I just have, there's a scale. One side, people only see logic and reasoning. One side only has faith. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm more in the middle to the side of reasoning, but people who uh, have, have faith in a religion or, or one God and everything like that are more on the faith side. Yeah. And I feel like they have more trouble understanding where people on the other side come from. Like we go, well, if this one answer is possible, then there's a lot of possible answers. Whereas the other side goes, no, there's only one possible answer. Right. And uh, my parents will never understand where I come from. And that's nothing on them. I love them to death. And I, uh, it honestly hurts a lot thinking that there's only one thing I think that they want from me in their life, and that's for me to have the right faith. Right. Well, and that's, I'm just not the type of brain that yeah, can do that. Well, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I mean, like you said, you can't. I think this is a great way because it's a way I get my thoughts out yeah, there. Man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I constantly want to make my parents proud, and no matter what I do... I feel like that's the one shortcoming I'm always going to have is I'm never going to think the way they want me to think and they will probably blame college. <laughs> <laughs> but are they wrong? Hey, dude, let me tell you something. We're not going to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. But yes. Uh, we went to Eureka Springs, man. And look, I've always heard about Eureka Springs and I guess I thought it was a lot bigger than it was. The technical dif- difficulties don't stop. No. It wouldn't be our podcast if they did. No, it's a bad bad podcast, bro. <laughs> we got to live up to the name. Okay. Uh, what was I talking about? I always thought Eureka Springs was kind of like a big town because people... I mean, there, there's, there's one guy that we work with that talks about going there like constantly. Mm-hmm. And just, just how people refer to Eureka Springs, it makes you think it's like a big town. With a lot of things to do. We went over there and honestly, first I saw the population cap or whatever. Yeah. Which was only, it was less than 3,000. And then, I don't I don't know. It's like, it felt like the smallest town. It felt as soon as you entered, it was over. And then we took a turn because we were going on to a restaurant. We took a turn to drive down to it and then we start entering what look, I guess is the town itself. Okay. And we were kind of, I guess in the downtown area where like new businesses were and going into the, the regular suburbs or whatever, the roads were super tiny. It felt like no roads were actually lit and they were twisty, turny going yeah. everywhere. Like, like one turn, it was like make a sharp left turn. Yeah. And it was like going up, up to a mountain. It wow. was like, where are we at Brazil? <laughs> I mean, who designed this thing? And then I thought, oh, it was artist community. Mm, that makes <laughs> Their sense. imagination was, yeah. how can we represent how we feel on the inside <laughs> on the landscape? Uh, like nothing was lit. And we we arrived, I think, before six. It was a little bit after, it was a little bit before six, I think. And we went and we couldn't find parking that was free. There was parking that said only if you have like a pass or VIP pass or something. Right. And it was basically if you were staying at this one hotel, I think you have a pass. And then the other parking spot said only for uh, residents or something like that. And the other parking spot had a parking meter. I'm like, what the hell? I just want to park somewhere. This isn't a New York City. Why can't I just right. be somewhere? This isn't communist China. <laughs> uh, and then we park and we couldn't figure out how to pay for the parking. So I'm, where I'm looking for money, yeah, I go to the meter and it looks busted out like it was broken. When I was in LA, um, all the meters there, I would just tap my phone to them and it would pay. It was like not crazy. like that. Yeah. Not like that. This looked like one of those old timey you put your money in. Mm-hmm. And then there was a little handwritten note that we saw that said broken use app. <laughs> so she downloads the app to pay for it. And then it says the spot we're in wasn't available. I'm like, well, it's gotta be because we're here, you know? Um, 
But then it turned out that it said that it wasn't enforced after 6 p.m. So we're oh, thinking okay. that it just wasn't taking it. it. That's how long it took us because we were there before 6 and it, it was after 6 before we could even pay for wow. it. Um, we go into something called the Grand Central. And it, I will say, Eureka Springs is beautiful. It's driving through it was like driving through back in time because everything's so small, so tiny. Everything's packed together, but it's all like. 70s colors you know like yeah. pink homes blue bright blue homes yellow homes and they're small dude like there's they look as big as this room mm-hmm. a lot of these cottages and then right on the main road that we were on there was like a little creek running all the way through really? it, like a little canal That's i awesome. was like man this place is kind of cool yeah you can rent cottages um that are right like right there on that road anyways i don't maybe it was just me and i couldn't see a street sign like it started getting more dark and there's no like lights and so we were trying to take turns and we couldn't see where the turns were because there's no signs identifying where the turns are you know, like a normal sign your show is like a big and it shows you that there's a turn mm-hmm. coming up there's like a yellow caution sign yeah. something i don't i couldn't find a turn hmm. that was after eating um but we go into where'd it. you guys eat it's called the grand central oh. um some I, there was another part of the name grand central something but we walked in, and it was really, it was like, it was beautiful. It was a really cool setting. It was like, it felt like we were in a bigger town than what it is. Mm-hmm. And uh, the food was crazy expensive. I had duck. I had, really? Yeah, I had fried duck or something with, um, I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I did take a video of the menu because I was like, this is fancy. It was almost like being on that cruise again. Um. My overall experience there was pretty great, but some of the things tasted a little odd. Like, uh, they gave us some whipped butter. Oh, really? But it tasted like the inside of a freezer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, when things go freezer burnt. So, yeah. I'm like, uh... Maybe they don't the, whip their butter that often. They might so not. So, when they do they whip it, not. they have to There just... wasn't a whole lot of people eating there, dude. Yeah. I mean, look, that duck costs like, 28 bucks. And what Sable got was... Well, I think it was less expensive, but... Anyway, Sable paid for the meal, so we're all good. Uh, but we ate there and then we left to go, um, it took like two hours. It was honestly a really long wait, but I mean, it was, it was good. Mm-hmm. And then we wanted to go see the Crescent Hotel. Yeah. Dude, that place looked weird. Like, yeah. I wanted to go in, but it, we weren't staying in whatever. I, had, I still had to work the next day. Right. I think Sable had to work the next day too, maybe. So we didn't stay. We just drove by it, but it, we had it, we had such a hard time trying to figure out where we were and where we were going. It was ridiculous. And then there was this woman that was on the side. Like as we we're driving away, we went down this turn, and there was this woman just sitting on a bench trying to draw. And it was night. There's no lights out really? there. I mean, I, I don't know what the heck she was doing. It was kind of creepy. She's probably a witch, to be honest. To be honest, that I'm not even kidding. That's probably the case. Yeah. I bet it's like a bunch of Wiccans out there. Mm-hmm. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Right. <laughs> well, I've never been, but uh, I've, I've... My name's Daniel. Yeah. I'm Daniel. Oh. I guess. Yeah. I really hate Vince. I don't want to be hexed. <laughs> okay. Overall, I liked Eureka Springs, but as soon as it got dark, I was pissed off. I could not figure out where I was going. I'm like, if we get a flat, we're dead. Yeah. We're just we're not having... Gonna, we're not going to have a wide shot tonight. We're having technical issues out Which the is rear. Fine. He'll just have to pan twice as twice as fast, like instead of switching to the wide. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Okay, that was my experience at Eureka Springs. I I've never been. It's been twenty five years. You Finally said went. you've never been, but you are. I had to get him back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, like. All of the plots for the houses, too. Not only were the houses small, some of them were really weird shaped. But some of them were just, yeah, they were really weird shaped. But it was like as soon as, when we drove by, as soon as you walked through the front door, it was like, it looked like the houses were only like five feet deep. It yeah. was really. Do you think people actually live in them? Like, or is it just like. Oh, look oh hands down. I believe, I believe the art, artist way is like minimalist. Yeah. I bet these people were like, we don't need to go out and buy a small home. We got the small <laughs> home. You know, like those small house buildings? They're like a shed. Mm-hmm. They already live there. I bet. Rather, oh, man. Yeah. Um, do we want to get into our favorite movies now, we can or the s- truth part of it? We can start doing that, 
and then take a break, or we can do the truth, just, just whatever. Uh, whatever you want to do. I don't know. I feel like people don't really want to hear our deep thoughts about what is reality. Yeah. <laughs> so let's save go. it up for a future one. Well, we can save it for the last part yeah. of it, because if people even make it to that part. Top five movies. Do you want to alternate? Like you I do. Okay. I do. And I want to talk. These, okay, spoiler alert. There's going to be spoilers because I want to talk about what the plots of these movies yeah. are and why I like them so much. Uh, I don't have these in a particular order. These are all just my top five movies of all time. My number one, I just said they don't know. <laughs> the first one I will mention okay. is Oblivion. Okay. Now, when I first heard that Oblivion was being made, I was really excited because I thought my favorite game, Oblivion, right. was being made into a movie. Yeah. Oblivion is not at all the Maybe same. Maybe someday. Someday, and they're going to really butcher it. Mm-hmm. Like, it's going to be stupid if they do. Uh, have, have you, you still haven't watched Oblivion? I haven't, actually. First of all, it does everything I love. It incorporates, like, space, mm-hmm. um, futuristic ideas. Then they bring in a beautiful soundtrack that is still my favorite soundtrack of all time. Yeah. I was just telling you about the song Oblivion mm-hmm. that has some... I don't even know how to pronounce her name. It's Suzanne something. Uh, that's the song I was listening to on the way to work, and I was like, wow, I love life. And then the song for our wedding, mm-hmm. um, Star Waves, that's from the movie, and it was uh, done by M83, which... Oh, yeah. Who does... I know them from somewhere else, but they do almost like a techno 80s electronic vibe for the future. I don't know. I love that type of sound. Uh, that whole... Like plot line is that Tom Cruise and then his name is Jack Harper in the movie. Jack um, and this woman who is his wife, their partners are in the future. I think it's the year twenty seventy seven maybe, and the Earth the Earth was attacked basically by aliens, and they are and it was ruined. All of humans left to go to a different planet, and they remain there to do tests before they go to the other planet to be with everyone else. Mm-hmm. And well, slowly, things start to unfold to where there's a, there's these all these zones, radiation zones, where they can't go past or else the radiation will kill them. And there's all these, uh, what they're called, scavengers or drones. I don't remember what they're exactly they were called, but uh, they were thought to be the remains of the aliens that were left behind that are constantly breaking crap and all kinds of stuff. But mm-hmm. they <clears throat> capture Jack, and you come to find out, Oh, it's Morgan Freeman. It's the humans. They're just scrambling. The The real thing is that aliens did destroy Earth, and they went ahead and basically jumped ship. Or they didn't jump ship. It was this... In the sky, there's like this this formidable shape that mm-hmm. is where the alien is. And uh, unbeknownst to them, Jack Harper has been working for the aliens, thinking it was oh. the humans that he's working for. Wow, so the humans are still there? And the humans that he's been killing, the scavengers, oh. were, were the humans, and they finally captured him, and they're trying to turn him to like oh, okay. be on the side of humanity. It's a crazy good movie, okay? I like movies with a good twist. Like but that. the more twist than that is they, Morgan Freeman's like, go to the radiation zones. And so he goes and flies to it, and he mounts this little hill, and he sees somebody down there on, on this thing. He's like, what the heck? And he looks closer, and it's him. Really? He's been cloned like 30 <laughs> times. He, so basically, he's all over the planet. Wow. There's all these different selves of him. And when he visits, like he, he, I don't know, knocks the clone unconscious, and he goes back to where that clone normally would be. And it's the exact home, just like the one he resides in. And there's a woman that looks just like his wife. And it's just all of these, it was just really crazy. And that's when he realizes, oh my God, I've been used my whole life. How, how long is my life? All of these movies that I love basically talk about reality as yeah. a perception. Maybe that's why I messed well, hold up. Hold on, is he, just, is he just another one of the clones? Is he the original? Well, it doesn't matter. Right, but does it does it state that? No, I, I think, I don't think he's the original. Okay. But the, all the clones share the same basic memories. Right. Anyways, Really good movie. You need to watch it. I, do, I yeah. would love to watch it right yeah. now. Uh, I love it. Anyways, you tell tell me. Uh, the first one on my list is for anybody who knows me, it's going to be obvious, but it's uh, the Return of the King from Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy. Um, ben said I couldn't pick a whole trilogy as my as one movie, but I will let it be known that I do love the whole trilogy. <laughs> but if I had to pick one, it'd be The Return of the King, just because everything uh, comes to like 
a culmination in that one and it also has the epicest like fight scenes and uh and it closes everything up but can i break your heart real quick yeah go ahead i never got into lord of the rings because i never could hear them what when I'm, i'd watch a lord of the rings movie why is it i always have to burp like when i you're drinking i mean i haven't even gotten half a bottle down yeah i'm the same way though i would try to watch these movies but i couldn't understand any of the words like the music was always so loud hold on we need to have a conversation how do you watch movies like like my preferred method of watching a movie is like almost you know just alone and in my room in isolation with like um headphones or ear 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 pods or something uh so no i like i like for all distractions to be min- minimized mm-hmm. okay I, if if i don't get that i really can't enjoy the movie and um basically what i remember is that so yes, I'm like you. I don't put on headphones, whatever. But I want it to be almost. I think dark. that makes a tremendous difference, though. Like, it, it, in terms of not being able to hear them, is what you were saying. Because I sometimes music can be overwhelming and things. It also, was way overwhelming. Also, do you want? Do you, are you? I'm a diehard subtitles fan. Like I put subtitles in everything. Yes, I love subtitles. Okay. And probably Lord of the Rings help with that because I'm like I am tired of not being able to hear what people are saying. <laughs> well, now when I watch them, I don't even have to hear them because I just know what they're saying. I yeah. Feel it, like, but. Well, the the era of Lord of the Rings for me is my best friend. We were next door neighbors. Uh, loved Lord of the Rings to death. So when I was finally allowed to watch them, I couldn't watch them as a child. Mm-hmm. That was a no-no in my house. When I was finally able to watch it, I was like, I can't even get into it. I don't even know what the guys are saying. Wow, that depresses me. Like, Dude, yeah. Well, the experience of Lord of the Rings was ruined. Well, have you me. seen them all now to this day? Like I haven't seen the newest ones that they just now made. Well, hold on. Those don't count, in my opinion. I have not seen those, but I have seen all the, the originals. The original trilogy? Mm. Okay. Uh, I'm sure I would have loved them. Wow. I, the, the whole concept of Lord of the Rings is near and dear to my heart, It's man. also my favorite like fantasy world, just in general, like in terms of books and just world not building. Mine. Not mine. Inheritance. Well, yeah. I really love those, but... I don't know. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings is also like a big part of my childhood. Like my dad would uh, read The Hobbit to us all the time and a lot of Tolkien's other books as well. But what's weird is I I wasn't allowed to watch Harry Potter or read Harry Potter, but Lord of the Rings was fine. So I wasn't allowed to watch Harry Potter yeah, either. So it's kind of weird. Until I met Sable, I had never seen one. Mm-hmm. And it was fun, uh, funny because as I reached the later part of my teens, my mom put on like Harry Potter one time. Yeah. I'm like, don't you dare freaking watch this. I wasn't allowed to watch this when it came out. Our church said it was of the devil. Yeah. There's no way you can watch this. Hmm. She didn't. She might have after I left the room. She probably did. She probably is a diehard fan and has like the tattoos and everything. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine my mom getting a tattoo? No, but I, <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's the first one on my list is Return of the King. But that, that's the third one, right? It's the third and final one of... It's where everything is yeah. smashed together. Yup. Yup. Well, I expected more of a... Uh, well, I that. don't think I need to like explain the plot to Lord of the Rings. I mean, there's this magic ring. Uh, they have to destroy it. They finally do in the third one. It's it's not... I don't know. It's an experience that you'd have to watch. Like, It's not like... It's not going to make someone want to watch it if I'm like, oh yeah, Sam and Frodo struggle through the mountains and all this. It, it's like, if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, you know. And if you're not, I'm sorry, but you don't and you never will. The guy who played in The Hobbit as... Um, Bilbo Baggins? Yeah, Bilbo. Um, I can't think of it. Martin Freeman. Martin, not Maury. Okay, I was like, <laughs> yeah, Martin. Martin Freeman. He was the guy who plays Watson and Sherlock Holmes yep. that, with Benedict Cumberbatch yes. or something. Cumberbatch. And Cumberbatch also <laughs> <laughs> is the uh, the voice of Smog in The Hobbit, which I don't think he talks very much. It all intertwines. You know, the more that you watch a show or another shows, you're like, wow, all these people really are a big click because they yeah. all work together in the same Well, I'm going to get movies. to that a little bit later because three of my movies have the same actor and it's Orlando yeah, Bloom. <laughs> I think yeah, there might be something deep rooted yeah, love no, there. Yeah, there might be. Uh, side note, I'm going to add, we're going to talk about movies or shows too. I want to add the new Sherlock Holmes series to my shows. Okay. But we'll talk about that like, a little, gotcha. little later. Second movie on my list, No Country for Old Men. I thought about putting that one on my list, but go on. First time I ever watched this movie was down in Louisiana. We used to go every year. Um, my dad had a friend from like I th- I'm gonna get this wrong. I just realized. Remember how I talk about memories? Yeah. In the last one, dude. Uh, case in point, 
I have this memory of me and my mom and my dad, both or all three of us, being at the top of Pikes Peak in Colorado. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, your mom was not there. I'm like, mm-hmm. are you sure she was there? And no, because I, I, I remember going on the train ride, the cog train going up to Pikes Peak, it was just me and my dad. But, but I have this you're memory. There, I have this memory of being at the top of the mountain. I remember my mom being there. I've got like this memory of her being in like this red sweater. And I was mm-hmm. really, it's just weird. Yeah, the mind is a powerful thing, I guess, because I've done that too. Like, I've had memories where siblings who who weren't even born at the time this thing happened, they were there with me. But I guess that's because having now spent my whole life with them, it's like... Your brain is just lives. so impressionable. Yeah, it's, it is. The, the slightest thing will make mm-hmm. you think. I watched another thing about uh, people posting uh, fake news mm-hmm. and people going, oh yeah, I remember that. It's just, it's just so easy to create a false memory. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I was talking about No Country Fold In. We used to go down there every year. Oh, it's talking about my memory might be mad about this, but I think um, my dad met his friend in an electronic school or something. Anyways, we used to go there every year to, you know, stay with them. I loved it. Like, I truly love these people. They're like my own grandparents. Mm-hmm. Um, he passed away a, a few years ago. Well, it's been a while now. Time goes, man. Um, rip. Rip. <laughs> I really do miss him. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I remember I had heard about this movie a lot. I remember even seeing posters for it at our theater, but I had never watched it. And we were, we were there in the living room, and it's late at night. And it comes on. And that night was born my fascination of, like, the bad guys, the yeah. villains. Yeah. Villains were just crazy. They weren't, like, the typical villain who was, like, maniacal and everything. It was just a guy who would just sit there and be quiet. It was kind of, like, just crazy. Mm-hmm. And Javier Bardem played the best villain in my book. <laughs> um, I'll get into other villains I like, but um, Javier Bardem, the role he played in that, he plays uh, Antoine Sugar. I love this movie so much that I watched it every night for a solid year. Really? Yeah, for a solid year I watched, and I did this with Seinfeld and um, School of Rock as well. Hmm. Dang it, I that's forgot about a, School of Rock. That's such a broad. Um like spectrum of things like No Country for Old Men, School of Rock, a Jack Black film, and Seinfeld. I think all three of them though kind of are the same as far as their plot. Hmm. Not what they do in the in the movie, but yeah. as far as there's not a real story. Yeah. I mean there is a story in No Country for Old Men, but it wasn't like a big story. I mean School of Rock it's not a big story mm-hmm. either. It's just this guy fakes being a sub mm-hmm. and he does a rock concert no country for old men this guy finds some dead mexicans takes the money and he gets tracked down mm-hmm. i mean they're really simple plots it was just how they were done yeah that i really loved uh anyways do you know the the how no country for old men plays out you yeah. did watch you watched i it watched here. it here the only time i've seen it was here at your house and it that night also changed my life yeah do you remember pretty well yeah i almost put it on my list dude it's amazing it is a good movie. and for those who don't know it starts out with, um, oh man, I can't, oh, it starts out with the bad guy mm-hmm. being pulled over by a policeman, mm-hmm. and the guy gets out of that car. Um, we're, I'm just gonna call him Anton. Anton for now. Uh, he gets out of that car, and he's like, "Uh, will you hold still, please?" Oh no, no, he gets no, no, no. My memory is bad. Okay, <laughs> he he pulls over somebody later, but he gets pulled over, put in handcuffs. They go to the jail. The sheriff's on the phone, and he sneaks up behind the sheriff and. Whoosh, and start strangling him. Yeah. And he, there's a moment, I watched the behind the scenes where they fall on the floor and he's like choking the guy out and the blood starts spurting and his hands are all messed up when he finally gets the cuffs up. And it's just like this idea that this guy, he's just crazy. Mm-hmm. He just does things. He he believes he has this code to live by, but the guy's just kind of, he's just crazy for crazy's sake. Yeah. Um. Then he, ha- he walks around with this thing that used to be a way to kill cattle. It was this pressurized hammer. Oh, Right. You know, and I'm getting sidetracked here. Jay, do you mind? Ah, oh, Snape was. Mama. Uh, cut out the messy house, please. <laughs> and so the whole idea is that this guy, he stumbles upon, he's he's hunting for antelope. I almost said cantaloupe. He stumbles <laughs> upon uh, this deal gone bad. Mm-hmm. And, this is, and he's... A bunch of cars. It was a Coke deal. Yeah. It's a circle of cars. Or a deal gone wrong. 
Mm-hmm. There, <laughs> there's a part in there where they're going through, and he's like, "Looks like there's a uh, this was a deal gone wrong." And the guy goes, "There appears to have been a glitch or two. <laughs> <laughs> and in the same spot later, it's like constantly the same spots getting visited by yeah. other people. And then, and then later, this guy come they come around. And he's like, "Well, hell's bells! I even shot the dog." I mean, there's so many little like. It just felt like real dialogue in right. that movie. And that's what I love. I just love things being genuine. It's just about the bad guy chasing after this money from the good guy. Good guy dies. Mm-hmm. And it was this whole idea of... It just really felt like a real scenario that could... I mean, I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, I just not trying to spin any like heroic story. No, it's no, no. Just, it wasn't spinning yeah. anything. The, and the whole idea was just... Things happen. Mm-hmm. They just happen. And it's, a, it's a great film. And, and it kind of goes with the co- uh, coincidences because um, Tommy Lee Jones, he's going to go check at this motel where the good guy got, got killed. Mm-hmm. And, um, and he's looking at the doorknob and he notices the whole, like it's been punched out. Yeah. And, he, and he's like, the bad guy's in there. And they set up the whole movie whereas Tommy Lee Jones in all of his years of being a sheriff has only had to pull his gun out once. Or maybe he never had to pull out his gun. But yeah. at that moment, he puts his hand on his revolver yeah. and you're like, Wow, and because he he's experiencing fear for a minute, because he's like, I've seen everything that this guy's done, and it's left an impression on me, you mm-hmm. know. And and I think I can't remember exactly, but I think he looks in there and the doorknob, and he can see a reflection of somebody else. Because the guy's in there waiting, right? Yeah, he's behind yeah. the door waiting. Yeah. And so when he finally opens the door, there's no one in the room, and it's just the whole idea of how easily one of them could have just died. Yeah. I don't know. It's such a another thing that left an impression on me from that movie is there's a part where. Um, Oh, I don't like this actor. His face just makes me mad. He was a lead actor in Zombieland. Um, you know the guy I'm talking about? Is it Jesse Eisenberg? No, I he I like him. Okay, the other guy then, the, the older man. one. Yeah, with the face. I he, don't remember his name. He's in um, Guardians of the Galaxy, I think, as well. Yeah. Um, mm, yeah. No. Like, no. Maybe no. he's got like. Maybe he is. I honestly don't remember. Woody uh, Harrelson. Woody Harrelson. That's yeah. his name. Uh, anyways. And there's a part where he's going after Anton because he's a loose cannon, basically. Mm-hmm. And uh, Anton gets him, captures him, and he has him sit down. He's got a gun train on him. And he's like, let me ask you this. If the rule you followed led you to this, of what use was the rule? And it's like, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Is you, you live by a code all your life, but if you knew the end result, if it's going to be end poorly for you, then what was the point of that rule? I don't know. I like the way the villain talks as well. Like, yeah, his, I love that. And there's a little part where he goes to a gas station mm-hmm. and he's eating peanuts right there, and he's mm-hmm. going to pay for them. He's like, "The idea of coincidence is he he would flip a a, a quarter mm-hmm. or a dime or a nickel. I don't remember. I think it was a quarter. And depending on which way it landed, was if he's going to kill that person or not. And uh, just the idea that this guy was going to be just fine, but as soon as he said, "Where are you where are you headed?" Mm-hmm. and he's like. Uh, I saw your plates back there, and he, then Anton's like, "I'm gonna kill this guy." Yeah. <laughs> oh, and after they did the coin toss, the guy goes to put it in his pocket. He's like, "Oh, don't put it in your pocket. It's not just any other coin, which it is." Yeah, but don't put it with the other ones <laughs> because uh, yeah, this yeah. guy doesn't even know how close he almost came to death. Yeah, I don't know. It's so cool. it's, a, it's a really good film. Like just from a, a like a, a cinematography. For graphic you ever seen it point as well you ever seen it brendan it's 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 fantastic it is fantastic. i like it a lot and it almost comes off as like a western or whatever but but it's not exactly it's not and it it's not the kind of movie i thought i would be into until i watched it and i was very into it yes yeah, i thought it was gonna be a western as yeah. well Super but good though. i think even the title is misleading because you don't really think about it but the whole idea is <laughs> It's like Tommy Lee Jones is about to retire or something. Well, yes, but it was the idea of this country is changing. Mm -hmm. When he first became in law enforcement, you did not see the crimes. And in in first, his little monologue at the very beginning, he kind of describes when he first began in law enforcement, no one carried a gun or only a few carried a gun. And he's never had to pull his gun out. And uh, the crime, he goes, the crimes you see today, you couldn't even imagine. I don't remember. Something about the crimes you say today, you couldn't even compare or something like that mm-hmm. but it's just going on about the world is changing and it's no it's no place for people who remember earlier times mm-hmm. and that's i really like that oh and then even the little sequence where he's talking about the dream he has of his dad 
before the movie ends, yeah. he's talking to his wife. He's like, I had a dream. My dad, my dad was there. He, he was going on ahead with me, and, the, and all that cold and all that dark. And I knew it would be okay. And it was it's really cool because his dad had died, mm-hmm. and he was dreaming that he was gonna it was gonna be okay. He was gonna see him again. I don't. The movie was just so good in so many ways. Yeah, it is. It 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 made me feel like a certain way. Like I love movies that are just like standalone. Like it's not part of anything else. It's just. A movie mm-hmm. for the sake of it being a movie, I mean, and not worry about a sequel. Yeah, yeah, I love. Not that. worry about selling tickets. No, just if they wanted it. to ruin it, they would come out with a second one, just be like, or a, a or, country for young yeah. men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, it was, it was great, great movie. It was great. Mm-hmm. And my one final thing about that is, it does not end at all how you think it would end. Mm-hmm. I mean, it leaves you a little bit to guess, but at the same point, part, uh, part it doesn't. Basically, all the good people die except for Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah, and uh, the bad guy keeps on living. Yeah. And he gets so close to getting caught, but nothing. Uh, your second favorite. Uh, the, the second one on my list is um, Christopher Nolan's uh, Batman Begins. And again, I was gonna, I was gonna put the whole trilogy, but Ben was like, no. Uh, <laughs> but I do appreciate the the trilogy as a trilogy, at which you have to um, in order to like each individual one. But I think my favorite, and this took a little bit of debate, but I think my favorite one is Batman Begins. Which, my favorite Lord of the Rings is Return of the King because everything ends in that one. So it's kind of the opposite of that. Everything kind of starts in this one, but it's also just a fantastic film. And it also has um, my favorite uh, Batman villain, the Scarecrow, played by my fa- one of my favorite actors, Cillian Murphy, who... I don't like him. You don't like him? Mm-mm. He Watch Peaky Blinders, have you? Mm-mm. Watch Peaky Blinders. It'll change your... His face is another face that just makes me mad. I like his face a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he... he, Yeah, Cillian Murphy, he plays the Scarecrow, and um, um, he's not even, like, the main villain, but so good. Such a good performance, and um, just all the scenes with uh, Ra's al Ghul and, like... And the, leading up to his training and yeah, everything. Yeah, it's, it's my favorite of, of all of them, and... Well, I don't know. It's hard to say because the the Dark Knight is amazing as well, but I like that one the most. I think. Um, I guess I don't really have to explain the plot either because it's Batman Begins, but it's just another Batman origin story. Um, Sable hates Batman, but she's never watched these, and I feel like if she were to watch them, because it it's not like the a, problem is you think of it as Batman, but it's yeah, just a good right. It's a very good just thriller movie almost it's, you don't even have to think about it as a Batman movie no think of it's not like Michael Keaton's Batman no it wasn't it's, it's not goofy at yeah, all it's, it's like, very serious it tackles superheroes the exact way I wanted the Avengers to be but the Avengers try to be too funny man Marvel does that they try to be they try to like be too lighthearted or whatever I can't stand it I'm not a big fan of it either but um I do like the Marvel universe um I yeah Christopher Nolan's Batman trilogy is just the definitive Batman. Movies. I mean, it, no matter if how many times they remake Batman, yeah, it's that it's, will always be Batman, right? It will, and I, yeah, I can't believe she can't like she doesn't like it. Like it's they're amazing. Well, she's not movies. watched them, right? But she would, she won't watch them either because it's called Batman. Yeah, and she's like Batman's stupid. It's Christian like, Bale's performance, Heath Ledger's performance, Cillian Murphy. Uh, you got Liam Neeson. It you kind of have to watch it. You should make her watch them. But um, one day, yeah, one day. But like I said. I don't really need to go into the plot. It's just one of my favorites. I agree with you. It's an amazing movie. Mm-hmm. But, and my third is not Batman Begins or The Dark Knight, but The Dark Knight Rises. The Dark Knight Rises, yeah. That is my third favorite movie on this list because the villain... Bane is almost, incredible. It's almost similar to Javier Bardem mm-hmm. in the fact that he's not... Well, he is... No, you know what? He's not crazy. He he doesn't go out and shout and be like this ridiculous villain. He's mm-hmm. just very methodical. Like, like the part in the very beginning, not in the very beginning. Where, where is it where the opening he puts his hand on the guy and he's like, "Do you feel in charge?" Oh yeah, uh, it's I don't remember where it is. But I remember the. It's just really good sayings. It's witty. If we were having a segment about favorite scenes, my favorite movie scene of all time probably is in that movie. Just the opening scene and the plane. The plane. And all that. Yeah. It was beautiful. It, it's one of the best movie scenes in the world. I think it should. They should have a category where they submit just individual scene scenes. And yeah, that should be that should be one. Well, uh, Bane is. I love the Joker. Mm-hmm. When I talk about scenes that I love, 
the Dark Knight is one of my favorite scenes. Um, when the Joker, it's like the, the there's no music. The movie kind of goes silent. And he leans out of the cop car, yeah. out of the back of the car, car I think. Yeah, and he's just like smiling and enjoying. God. He's like he just enjoys the chaos. There's so many moments. In, there's just so many in good all, in all three of the movies. Like just <sighs> movies don't hit me like this anymore. Yeah, I you know? know they don't really make like great movies anymore. They're they're far and few between, in my opinion. But I will I will discuss some not on my list that I love for the sake of the story, but mm-hmm. for one reason or another. They just don't. They just don't hit me to be as my favorite. Yeah. Do we need a pause? Okay. <laughs> um. Uh, let's see. What else about that? Um. The kind of the music. And I heard somebody talking about it, how they thought it was like goofy, like the that it dragged on too long, like the scene where he's in. Because they don't realize the the whole plot line of. The Dark Knight Rises is several months. He breaks his back and he's in this like prison yeah. healing, and it's several months that yeah, goes by. Like, I'm all for like long movies. Like I like them as long as they can make them. Like I, I don't want a crappy long movie, right? Of course, but if it's for the sake of the story, if you have to make it a little longer or make it, if they had cut out that part, you yeah, would have kind of you, you wouldn't come, appreciate it. Yeah, because that that right there, that whole story arc explains who the villain is. Yeah, and you get this idea of who the villain is, and you realize. No, the villain was somebody else, and Bane is not the person who made the leap. It was his mom. No, no, no. It wasn't his mom. It was like his. Uh, it was a that girl. Yeah. Uh, his love interest in that movie. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, the whole way you're thinking that it's Tom Hardy, mm-hmm. it's Bane that did this, but it's mm-hmm. actually the girl, and then Tom Hardy was just her protector. Yeah. I don't know, dude. That movie was so good. I, I almost want to watch that. I I want to watch. I, I like to watch them in trilogies. Like I are we gonna start the first one tonight and watch the second and third? Maybe I don't. Are we know. staying up all night for this, <laughs> dude? I would be. Down. <laughs> They're so good. I am down for um, it. I haven't seen them in a while. I <laughs> we were talking about like how. Hello. I've got to stop talking as long as I do. Um, it's okay. I will list that movie, and I guess yeah, I'm not gonna discuss the plot line of it because. That's. I'm not going to discuss the plot line okay. of it, but yes, I, that is the number three on my list. Yeah. I just love the characterization of that villain, how he's not the typical run-of-the-mill villain who just shouts and is doing all this crazy stuff. He's just kind of like a cold, methodical, and he's like, mm-hmm. yes, do you feel in charge? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think Tom Hardy's performance really elevated that, and I was going to say, like we were talking about all these actors like being in everything. Tom Hardy is also in Peaky Blinders, so is Cillian Murphy, which... They're two of my favorite actors because of that. But anyway. Um, okay, that was my third, so it's your turn. Uh, my third one I listed, it's kind of an oddball one, but it's um, Kingdom of Heaven. And it, it it has Orlando Bloom, Liam Neeson, and probably a bunch of other people. But um, it's set during the Crusades or a little bit after the Crusades or something like that. And uh, Orlando Bloom's character's wife dies, and he's just like a village blacksmith. But he, his father was a like a knight for the king or something like that. So he goes to follow in his father's footsteps, and um, the king, the king of Jerusalem, is actually a leper. So he's he's wear, he wears this mask all the time. And it's like like super cool. Um, but the way the movie sort of culminates is like there's this other guy. Uh, like there's a bunch of corruption in the court or whatever and this other guy wants to go to war with the Muslims and it's about the the king um, and Orlando Bloom who becomes like his close confidant or whatever they sort of come together and get an army to like help defend the Muslims and uh, I think the king like dies on the battlefield but he, he's like dying from leprosy anyway but he like has this epic charge into battle and I think that's how he dies but it's it's a really I'm good not, movie. I've not heard of it. It almost sounds familiar, but you saying that reminded me of another movie. But all right, what was the movie? Uh, well, I was, I'm going to save it for an honorable mention. Okay, because it's, it is an older movie, and I haven't seen it in forever. But I do remember it gave me the feels. Yeah, seriously, it was such a good movie. Which has two of my other favorite actors. We'll we'll tie into the actors okay. in a little bit. So you're done with your third? Yeah, that I don't really have a lot to say except watch it. We are the knights who say me. <laughs> We are now the knights who say Icky, 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 Batang, Zing, Super Dowl. It's a Monty Python. Monty Python and the Holy Grail is on my top five list because that is the only movie I thought was consistent, 
consistently hilarious. Yeah. All the way through, I'm constantly laughing at it. I'm, I try to use the reference from it all the time, and Sable's pissed at me probably for doing it. She just rolls her eyes, you know. Yeah. She almost rolls her eyes so hard she's doing somersaults. <laughs> Look, everywhere through that movie, even in the very beginning scene, they're just, this guy's, uh, they're skipping. Mm-hmm. Acting like they're on a horse. With the coconuts. And, yeah, and the um, King Arthur is going around. And the guy's following him as click, click. Click, 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 And then he's, he's, a, hey, hello, good sir knight. It is the king of the castle here. And he's like, are you banging coconuts? <laughs> it's like, they have this little spin off. It's like, well, who cares about coconuts? Can I just talk to the king of the castle? Yeah. The lord of the castle. And he's like, where'd you get a coconut? <laughs> I found it. Found it? I highly doubt that. And he's like, why? He's like, like, because <laughs> the coconuts are uh, uh, for uh, tropical. And he's like, well, maybe it migrated. <laughs> Are you suggesting that coconuts migrate? I yeah. love that part. And then the scene right after that, they're in this town, and he's like, "Bring out your dad! Yeah. <laughs> Bring out your dad!" And this guy comes out there holding this uh, old person who's obviously alive. And he's like, "How much?" And the guy goes, "I'm not dead." And he's like, "Oh yes, you are. Shut up. <laughs> I'm not. You aren't fooling anyone. Shut up." <laughs> And they, uh, I am happy. I am happy. <laughs> well, they, they definitely pioneered like a lot of comedy. Like, yeah, it's they, good. They were the only ones doing that kind of thing when they were doing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, let me think of another scene that I just thought was hilarious. Oh, the Black Knight scene mm-hmm. where he's he, uh, none shall pass. He's like, stand aside, knight. I am the, I'm the king or whatever. And then uh, they go in a little fight, and he cuts off his leg. No, I think he cuts off his arm. I can't remember the order in which he cuts it off. And he's like, as every appendage he cuts off more, the guy's like more and more ready to yeah. scrap. And he's like, come yeah. on at me, you bloody coward. <laughs> he's like, you stupid fool. You got no arms left. What are you going to do? Bleed on me? Yeah. No, uh, I absolutely love that movie. And if I want to laugh, I just think about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. I will get into the plot of this movie. Monty Python is a comedy group. The actual name of the movie, I don't know what it would actually be called. I just know it as Monty Python and the Search for the Holy Grail or the Quest for the Holy Grail. And the Holy Grail or something. Uh, and the or Holy something Grail. Like that, yeah. No, you're exactly right. And yeah. the Holy Grail. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And it's just um there's a few different plot lines running in it, but the basic one is King Arthur is searching for knights um to find the Holy Grail. Mm-hmm. And um <laughs> there's just so many good parts. There's one that I didn't really find exactly funny but it gets funny as the story progresses and then the first time i watched the movie there was a side plot about like investigating a murder and they end up oh, arresting yeah. him at the end of the yeah. show uh that's just how the movie grows on you because when i first watched it when i was younger it didn't make sense mm-hmm. but i knew it was like certain parts were funny and then as i got older the other things that were lying on the surface got more funny god dude that is just pure comedy gold i love that movie so much What's happened? We have uh, breaking news. What? No, she's not. But thank you for checking. What? <clears throat> you know what? We were just talking about um, No Country for Old Men. Odessa is one of the places in that movie. Really? So there was another shooting. Yeah. I wonder what's about to happen in the news, seeing as how there's a shooting that just happened. It's ongoing. Currently? I think it's probably done, but it says live. I don't know. An hour ago. Man, it's crazy. Um, it sucks I was just talking about comedy. Yeah. Now I feel wrong for... Well, we can combat the evil in this world with comedy. That's the way you're supposed to do it. Yeah. Um. Okay, there's my fourth mention. That is a good one. Uh, that's in my honorable mentions, but it's not in my top five. Um, my fourth or third i think i mixed up and gave you guys my uh they're not in order anyways right, right? yeah well kind of but if, mine aren't if they were my next one would be before my last one and my next one is gladiator with russell crowe mm, um, mm. which i don't even need to say a whole lot about that that's just a fantastic film you've seen it i have yeah. i've seen it twice uh the first i don't know the first time but the second time i watched it when we moved in this house uh, when we had no furniture, we just had two chairs. Yeah, the, a tape was left here, and it was Gladiator. Really? So I just popped it in the, the VCR and watched it's it. It's a sign. No, that's a a really good one. Um, Russell Crowe is amazing in it, and it's like 
really sad like his wife and like daughter got like burned to death by the romans or somebody and um but he's just like this gladiator and he's just i guess he's just still fighting like for them i don't even know but it's it's incredible and fighting the oppressors yeah it's got joaquin phoenix in it um which i'm excited for him in the new joker movie you know how many people were going on about white white privilege and another male white male playing that and it's like he's not even white yeah i mean his skin color might be a little bit white but he's like puerto rican yeah something like that but anyway gladiator is a great film um it's got the classic uh are you not entertained scene uh really love that um the plot like i said he he's this general uh general like maximus aurelius something 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 and um he he he's getting to the point where he's getting to retire from from the roman like army and i think i can't remember how it happens but somehow they they want him to go to rome and keep fighting or serve as like a advisor or something like that and he doesn't want to so the emperor or the emperor's son or somebody sends these soldiers to kill his family because they think that'll spur him to like do it because he won't have anything to stay home stupid for. yeah that just turns him into like their biggest enemy and so he, he they he becomes a slave and then he gets a chance to like fight for his freedom as a gladiator and he ends up um working his way up to where he gets to fight the so it's not the emperor who's evil. He actually was really close friends with the emperor, but he died, and his, or his son, the emperor's son, murders his father to become the emperor. That's Joaquin Phoenix, and he he's the one who like wronged Russell Crowe or whatever, and he ends up working his way up to be like the best gladiator they have, and then he he's at this point where he can publicly challenge Joaquin Phoenix, and uh, he's he's challenged him in front of a whole coliseum of people, so he can't be like no, so he like dons his armor and everything and he goes out into the arena and they fight and uh he ends up losing i can't remember if he spares his life or not do you know i honestly don't remember the I plot line i just remember watching it i can't remember but he he beats he beats him and i know he has him at his sword at the end of his sword i don't know if he spares him or not i can't remember it kind of makes me want to find out but it's a great film either way yeah if he kills him it's great if he doesn't it's almost even better because it's like i don't like russell crowe you don't He's in one of my honorable mentions called um, Master and Commander, The Far Side of the World, which is also a great film. I don't watch it. It's good. All right. Uh, so we're on to the last ones. If I can turn my phone on. I need to just start using pen and paper. <laughs> like the Get ready days. for it. Get ready for okay, it. Okay, I'm ready. Cloud Atlas. Oh, really? I've, n- I've never seen it. Beautiful movie. Is it? Uh, <laughs> Sable's dead. I got him to watch it finally, and he was like, that's the biggest liberal piece I've <laughs> ever seen. <laughs> But it's a really great movie because it's kind of tying in reality again. And it's almost tying in reincarnation. Mm-hmm. It's similar. It's um, it's like the same five people play different roles throughout time. So it starts um, it starts back in like the pirate days. Um, I don't remember exactly. I think somebody was wanting to try to free slaves, but I'm not going to get into that part of it because I don't remember the exact plot line I need to watch it again but <laughs> uh, but it's the idea of say us there's four of us okay I almost said five there's four of us here and it, throughout time we will constantly be in each other's lives some way like my next life you might be my dad you might be my son or you could take on the form of a girl or I could take on the form of a boy and we could be together like that and it's, it's vice versa with Sable it's which we're always going to be in each other's lives mm. at some in some way, and it was just really cool that we keep on coming back and we're always um, there's a I don't I guess the word is monologue for this one of the main characters that comes in the future her name is Sung Mi or Su Mi mm-hmm. um, she they're they're making a stand against it's kind of the same plot line almost for the whole thing it's kind of like people are trying to oppress somebody else and it's always going to be somebody trying to resist and they're making their last stand trying to broadcast her voice of of uh the resistance out to everybody mm-hmm. and they bre- they're going to break in and she's she's standing there with this loudspeaker and she's talking about like i'm tied to you you are tied to me we are you know we will always be together i don't know it, i mean i don't remember it it's not an impressionable as the other movies mm-hmm. 
but just the idea of it was amazing. I love Tom Hanks. Who, who was in it? Halle Bay, Beller, Halle, Halle Berry. Berry's in it. Yeah. And then there's a, there's a few more that are really recognizable that's in the movie. And I can't remember their names off the top of my head. I've never seen it, and I've never read the book, but I've heard a lot about both. It's a long movie. Yeah. I have the book. <laughs> nice. Uh, and I love both. It's it's one of those that you need to watch, and you probably need to watch it a few more times after that to yeah. really get the feel of it, because it's constantly linking other things together. It's just a really beautiful, really beautiful movie, man. I honestly love it. Uh, anyways, I can't really describe the plot to you other than it's just about how people are constantly yeah. in each other's lives. And That's at the end cool. of it, the at the end of it and and so it's also describes how like human language evolves over time as well Mm because they start saying different things like they go really into the future after some kind of collapse and me boss what are you doing (laughs) uh if you're listening to this on itunes or spotify there's a cat on the table (laughs) uh uh, yeah, I'm losing my train of thought for that movie, but basically, yeah. people should go watch it. Yeah, I look, I, it's on Netflix. I'll have to watch it. Let me go over several of my honorable mentions. Actually, I'll just go through my list. I'm not going to describe the plot lines. I'm okay. just going to say what they are, and I love them. Um, you made me think of a few. Uh, when you said Kingdom of Heaven, I thought of Secondhand Lines. I love that? that movie. Dude, that oh is my a God. good movie. And, and oh, that's probably on my list. Dude, yeah. Here's the thing. My list was really rushed. We might have to do another one of these episodes <laughs> in the future, but my list was really rushed, but I love that movie a lot. That movie I love is, Robert Duvall. Yeah. I love the the British guy who plays in it. I don't remember his name, but he was also in um, Batman. Mm-hmm. Let's see. And that movie gets me feeling it every time. Yeah, I, I, I love that film. I tear up all the time mm-hmm. in that movie, man. I haven't seen it in a while, but it's I It's got Haley Joel Osment as the main like kid. It's a great movie. Um, yes, it is a great movie. Yeah. It is heartwarming. Yeah. It is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Let's see. When you said Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin yeah. Phoenix. The movie Her. Yeah, I've not seen that. Oh, my God. That made me cry, too. Mm-hmm. I'm just finding out I'm a big baby. <laughs> and he falls in love with a computer. Right. But it's, when they, it's in the future when they've developed AI that learns and everything like that. Oh, my God. That is a good movie. Like, it truly is just a good movie, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's Joaquin Phoenix. I almost got—I get him confused with the guy who plays in The Big Bang Theory. Oh, really? Yeah, um, the guy who wears Leonard, or I think his name is Leonard. Yeah, I don't watch it, but uh, my yeah. parents used to watch it. Okay, The Martian. Oh, absolutely love that Batman. movie. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. just a crazy space story. I love space, mm-hmm. and so anything that deals with space, I really like. And just how he gets a, stranded on Mars and he survives, and kind of the story, and it felt so real. Um, Interstellar. Oh my God! Do you watch Interstellar? Yeah, I have. Jesus Christ! Yeah. I love that movie. I actually still don't understand it to the point I think I should, but it was really it was really I've cool. Only seen it once. But oh, okay. It's well, one of those where you have to watch a couple times. I think I'm not gonna go over the plot. Okay. I'm gonna go over this cool idea though. They go over several theories. They go over um, relativity, like the closer you are to a black hole, the yeah. time changes, or how time is just as we know it doesn't react the same way through. We only experience time one way, but it's like people who go to outer space actually end up being like different ages than if they had stayed on Earth the whole time. Mm. I don't understand it. I, I truly don't. And isn't that one thing that's just like, we're in a dream. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. Um, but he goes to try to save Earth. They're trying to find a new place to colonize because humans are going to die. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to figure out a way to save it. And they're like, there's only one thing we're missing. Um and we're hoping that because of how long it's going to take you to go out and find a new planet, that by the time you find a new planet, we'll have discovered what we're missing. And then throughout the movie, there's this little girl. Um, who's the guy who plays the main character? Matthew McConaughey. I don't like him. Really? But I like this movie. I like him uh, a lot. He, he's like a true genius. I, I think he used to work for NASA or something in this movie. And anyways, his child is like, I'm going to be a grown-up by the time you get back. The time you're supposed to get back, mm-hmm. which... He might not even come back. And she experiences a ghost in the movie. Come to find out, he gets sucked into a black hole. And time, when he goes into the black hole, that's when he experiences, like, there's other beings there. There's other there's other life that is representing what time is in the fourth dimension or something like that. It was really weird. And he's able to interact. 
it's called the Tesseract. They're, mm-hmm. they're able to interact with time, or he is, as a fourth dimension or as a three-dimensional. I don't know how to describe it, but he's pulling on these times, these different things, and it's knocking shelves off a book, and then it goes to young, his daughter, mm-hmm. and these books are falling off the shelf, and he's like, I'm your ghost. Oh, like he, He's interacting like 40 years ago yeah. with his daughter, and then she's she's of age now she's 30 years old maybe and she's in the old house where he used to contact her mm-hmm. and she's like oh my god my dad was trying to contact me he got he it wasn't that he didn't want to come back he just wasn't unable to come back wow and then so she gets the answers because he gives her the answers to the this equation mm-hmm. that will save humanity they ended up she publishes it she figures it out they're on their way to uh get her dad and he goes through the black hole or whatever, and he finally comes out the other side just floating in space. They pick him up, and they bring him to his daughter, who is now like 90 years old on her deathbed. Wow. Because of how time is just malleable. Yeah. And dude, it blew my mind. It made me cry. Like, And that movie inspired me to start writing the story about um, how if the sun were just to disappear hmm. and how things would be. And it was the idea of, um, I don't know. I haven't really got very far into it, but I... Sounds interesting. Yeah, because it takes eight minutes for the light from the sun to reach Earth. So really? for eight minutes, we would not know anything wow. had happened. Hmm. Which doesn't seem that long, but at the same time, it goes. Here was the cool idea. If the sun were to suddenly disappear right now for maybe 30 years, I don't know what the time span is, but several years, you could still see the light of the sun that has already gone extinct on the planets in our solar really? system. Yeah, because of how long it takes for the to wow. light to reach those planets. So we would be looking at light that was already extinct. Space is weird, dude. Space is weird. <laughs> so for like, I think I think the number was 30 years. But for 30 years, we could still look at light that didn't exist hmm. on uh, shining on planets that were so far out. And people don't think of how big space is because it's impossible for the mind to imagine yeah. infinity or... <clears throat> Anyways, uh, looking at the distance between planets, that is how far away, you know, like, it wasn't Mars. I think it was Jupiter or Saturn. It was just, it was so far away that for 30 years, we could still see the light on the planets in a solar system that was already sunless, you know? Yeah, that's insane. Oh, man, it blew my mind. Okay. I, uh, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> John Wick, my favorite yeah. action movie except for Rambo, which September 20th, the new Rambo comes out. I've already requested it off from work, so me and my dad can go watch it together. I am excited. I loved uh, Rambo First Blood. I really liked the uh, second one, third one, and the fourth one you can really tell his age. But this fifth one, I think he got buffed back up for it. Yeah. I think he started looking a little bit younger than the fourth one. Um, another movie that is very... Uh, unknown is the discovery it was a netflix original i believe Mm -hmm. it was the idea that some some scientist discovered a machine that could show you the afterlife it doesn't like give you a huge glimpse into it but we all of a sudden could discover that there is something out there and all of a sudden there were mass suicides because people were like i want to go see what the other side is like and so they they, i think they call it yeah the discovery is the term for the mass suicides they're like is that before the discovery or after the discovery because as soon as they discovered it there are just right. mass suicides everywhere. And it was a really cool movie. Oh, my God. It. I literally... I remember the night I watched it because I woke Sable up crying so hard. Really? Dude, I was shaking. The, dude, and she was like, man, yeah. are you okay? It was... That movie was rough, man. Yeah. Constantly, you're getting hit with feels. You can't take that very often. I still haven't rewatched it, but definitely an honorable mention. Um, real quick, I'll go into uh, TV shows. Um, Seinfeld. All-time favorite TV show, bar none. Uh, Frasier is my next one. I love the humor of Frasier. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. I love it. And then I would say The Office, yeah. Parks and Rec, which Parks and Rec took me a little bit to get into, but now I'm into it. I've watched the season many times over. Same with The Office, or I've watched the whole series. Uh, Cosmos, the space-time odyssey. I love space, and it does a great way of trying to depict space and the history of um, yeah. uh, uh, astronomy. And then... From the Earth to the Moon, um, it's a series by Tom Hanks that depicts the true experience that we had in the 50s to get to the moon. Was it the 50s or the 60s? I don't remember. When was 60s? Because we went in 69. Okay, yeah. And it was, we we will go to the moon in this decade uh, uh, and do other things, not because they're easier, but because they are hard. And yeah. I don't remember what the exact quote was, but it plays it in every single beginning of yeah. it. Um, 
It's it's a it's a like mini, mini documentary. It, series. Yes, yeah. Every ser- every episode is a length of one movie, mm-hmm. but they all tie in together, and it talks about the the whole um, the trial of trying to get to the moon, and to, and you know the people who died just on Earth in missions are like. Um, test like missions, tests, yeah, and like how they burned alive in the, the space capsule, and they realized there was too much oxygen in the presence of Velcro. It like made it super flammable. Mm. It was it was really good, um, very informative. Anyways, that's all I got to say from TV shows and movies. What are your honorable mentions? Uh, my fifth movie is. Um... Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Uh, my fifth movie was Oh Brother Where Art Thou, which is just a a great movie. My mom loves it. Yeah, it's really good. Mark it's, loves it. It's actually a. Um, I don't, know, I don't know if everyone knows this, but it's like a retelling of Homer's uh, The Odyssey. But like, because did you pick up on that? Have you seen it? It's been a long time. It's got the Cyclops, it. the guy with the one. It, 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 watch it again with that in mind. But anyway, it's a, it's a really good movie. Um, the plot is just The Odyssey, but modern. Uh, it's good. Honorable mentions were that one that I mentioned. Um, Master and Commander, Far Side of the World. As well as The Princess Bride. That almost made like... The list, but it's really rushed list. TV shows. Um, my favorite one right now is uh, Peaky Blinders, <clears throat> which is really good. It's a it's a Netflix. It's a BBC show, but we get it here in the US on Netflix, and they get it, they like season five is going on right now in the UK, and we'll get it later this year on Netflix. And uh, Band of Brothers was an HBO miniseries or whatever, it was like ten episodes or something, but it was about um, easy. Easy Platoon or Easy Squadron or something in World War Two. They were the, like the first ones to storm Hitler's base in the Alps or something like that. They were they were involved in a lot of key like uh, movements in World War Two, but it was a really good show. Um, the Office, I like that a lot. I don't really watch a whole lot of TV, but those are all I wrote down for my TV <laughs> shows. Well, I don't disagree with any of them except Peaky Blinders. I still haven't seen it. I don't really want to see it. Yeah. It's- oh, I will mention one more movie that I only saw a part of, and I've never been able to finish the rest of it, but I would love to. Tom Hardy's in it, and uh, I think it's called... Um, I don't remember what it's called. It's where they're, they're moonshiners. I don't know. Oh, God. I Is that Tom Hardy he's in? Yeah, it was a beautiful movie. There's a part where he gets his neck cut, and he oh like holds God. his neck Ugh. and walks to the hospital, and that whole time I was like, that wow. dude's a <laughs> badass, my God. Uh, anyways, that's it. We, we're trying to cut it short to the, uh, this time because we're trying to go out to Whispering Pines to see the stars. Yeah. Apparently, we can see Jupiter and Saturn tonight or something like that. I'm all for it. Uh, all for it. Uh, sorry that we're rushing it and mixing it up. Sorry for the technical difficulties as well. Technical difficulties. And you probably will hear beep, 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 beep all the time. <laughs> but thanks for tuning in. And uh, we'll be maybe you'll be listening to this on iTunes or Spotify. So Please like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah. And hit the bell. <laughs> see you guys next time. Bye. Ah!